So hard law is when Congress passes a detailed set of rules or maybe a regulatory agency creates a bunch of detailed regulations. You know, those are written down, they're detailed, they're legally binding. Whereas soft law is not legally binding. It's a set of overall principles that everybody agrees to. The main difference between soft law and hard law are three. First, soft law is incredibly flexible. Anybody can create it. Second, it has no jurisdictional limitations or restrictions. It can be done anywhere, exported and imported from anywhere. And third, there's the enforcement issue. Soft law needs an alignment of incentives for it to work. Without it, the nothing will happen and potentially people and organizations will face wasted time and think that it was it was just not worth doing. And that's why the alignment of incentives is incredibly important because without it, uh, it is unlikely that soft law will be effective. The devil ultimately is in the detail. And the real challenge is figuring out in specific contexts with respect to specific problems, what's the right mix of soft law and hard law? Where should one apply and the other not? It's a, a really a thinking about a recipe or a blend and what's the right mix to be applied in particular contexts with respect to particular technologies and problems and, and, and societal values too. I think one of the misconceptions about industry self-regulation is that it's always, by its proponents, thought of as an alternative to government regulation. When the reality is that most times industry self-regulation will work alongside government regulation. And in fact, self-regulation can actually amplify the effects of government regulation. It holds companies to their promises. And so if a company or an industry says that we are doing X, Y, and Z in our business practices, but then they aren't doing that, the FTC uh, can step in and say you're violating the law. I think the greatest area of opportunity is the exposure of new information and the creation of a market of ideas. Forever we've tried to govern ourselves in different ways. We've done it through laws and regulations. We've done it through social and cultural norms. The creation of the term soft law, what it embodies is our own efforts to set these ideals into some form of standard behavior. Transparency and accountability is really important in industry self-regulation. Um, there needs to be some sort of monitoring for compliance with the standards and public reporting on that so that it, the industry standards go from words on a page to actual action. This kind of third-party checking to see whether the standards are being complied with is an extremely important part of self-regulation. Independent industry self-regulation works well when the business leaders commit to doing the right thing and want to work with a third party that will help the industry achieve its goals. The telecommunications industry is very active um, in industry self-regulation, so it works for us and it works for our competitors as well. That doesn't mean that we are guaranteed success, but it is important that the process is fair, that the process is efficient, and that the process is reliable. There are no sectors of the economy that could not potentially benefit from soft law. Governance requires all hands on deck. I firmly believe that businesses want to do the right thing, and government is not the only answer, and corporate compliance programs not the only answer. Independent industry self-regulation and soft law in general has a place in American industry.